this video, you will learn what degree days are, how to calculate them, and how to use them in the context of energy management. Let's start with a simple definition of degree days. Degree days measure how many days have been hot or cold. They are used in energy management to calculate the energy consumption of a building. Heating degree days measure how much in degree and for how long in days the outside air temperature is below the heating level. Cooling degree days, on the other hand, measure how much and for how long the outside air temperature was above the cooling level. But let us start with the basics and see what is behind the concept of degree days, how to calculate them and to implement them in your energy management. One typical use case is that you want to compare the energy usage of a building over time. This can be an office building, a factory or any other building. Normally, you have the energy consumption on an annual basis, monthly basis, or maybe even on a daily basis. And now you want to track the energy performance. The second use case is that you want to compare different buildings on different locations. This might be a hotel portfolio with multiple locations, and you want to compare the energy performance of the different locations in different climate zones. Let's dig a little bit deeper and see what factors affect heating and cooling demand. In general, you can distinguish between internal and external factors. The internal factors are the ones you have an influence on because they are inside your organization and you have leverage or optimization potential. One big internal factor is our behavior, the human factor. Another important internal factor to take into account is the occupancy of your building or the workload of your factory. For example, if you have a lot of empty space, you might be able to reduce your energy consumption by using it more efficiently. And if you're running a three shift 24 hour operation, you have to take other things into account than running a nine to five office building. Materials and technology are a big part of your heating and cooling demand. There are a lot of different technologies that can help you to reduce your energy consumption for heating and cooling. Investing in good insulation materials, modern HVAC components, smart sensors with an energy management software can help you to do that. And last but not least, we have external factors. These are things we have no influence over, like the weather. Every kid knows that on colder days you have to run your heater on a higher level and consume more energy, vice versa for AC usage on hot days. In the next part, we will explore how outside temperatures affect energy consumption and why degree days are so important for accurate data analysis. Most parts of the world, we have changing outside temperatures throughout the year. In the Northern Hemisphere, a typical monthly average temperature diagram might look like this. As you can see, there is a cold period in winter and a hot period in summer. In most regions, we can also see an annual change of average temperatures. But average or mean temperatures are not a good indicator you can work with for analyzing heating or cooling consumption. Let me show you why. Let's go back to our example of monthly average temperatures for one location. Let's assume if you sum them up and calculate the average again, this will represent year two of this diagram. This second monthly diagram looks very similar, but we have a much hotter summer and a much colder winter. So we should have used way more energy. Let's figure out the annual average again. As we can see, the hotter summer and the colder winter are balancing each other out and we get the same result as in example one. Now you know that outside temperatures, especially mean or average temperatures over longer periods are not suitable for energy assessment. And we can finally come to the concept of degree days. In the following example, I show you how to calculate heating degree days for one month. Degree days are based on the outside temperature. In this example, we take the daily mean temperature for one month. In the next step, we set the base temperature of our building. The heating base temperature is the outside air temperature below which the building needs heating. Now we check every day if the outside air temperature was dropping below our base temperature. These days are called heating days. For each heating day, we calculate the difference between our base temperature 
also called balance point, and the outside temperature. On this day, the outside temperature was dropping below our balance point of 15 degrees Celsius. The difference is 2 Kelvin. So this specific day counts as two heating degree days. This calculation is done for every single day. Days where the outside temperature is not dropping below the base temperature are counted as zero. Degree days are a measure of how many days in a given period of time the outside temperature was how many degrees below or above your base temperature. You can do this calculation on a daily basis but for the most analysis, we sum the degree days up to a weekly, monthly, or even annual number. Let's go back to the example of the beginning of this video and see how we can integrate the concept of degree days into the energy assessment of our office building. If you take a look at the absolute kilowatt hours, you can see a small decrease from 2019 to 2020 and then a 15% increase from 2020 to 21. Let's integrate degree days in our assessment. You simply divide your energy usage by the number of degree days. This value shows you how many kilowatt hours you needed for every single degree day in this period. The lower that number, the better is your energy performance. In this example, we see a pretty stable efficiency ratio, although in absolute numbers, the usage had a big increase of 15% in the last year. While the efficiency ratio is really easy to calculate, it is not as easy to grab as actual kilowatt hours. In the next video, I show you two other approaches, how to weather correct the energy usage in kilowatt hours, so they are easier to compare and to translate into euros and dollars. Thank you for watching. Now make sure that you check out our energy tools on our website energy-data.io. We have a free degree day calculator, an energy data normalizer and a regression tool. These tools help you to save time, save energy and save costs. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. And for more videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button.